I've got 10 AI art prompt formulas for you today that you can try to get some very specific results from your images. Now these are designed more for mid journey but can be used on any AI art platform and the images you see here have been created using mid journey. But to kick things off, I've got a prompt formula here for photography based images. It's got a subject in photography style, composition, lighting, format of the shot and camera type. Of course, you can add or remove any of these, but you want to change them out and I'll show you quickly how you can do that in mid journey. So I recommend copying these from the description below. I'm going to change my subject here for this first example into a frog. The photography style I'm going to change into a vintage portrait. I'm going to change the composition to head and shoulders, the lighting, studio lighting, the format of the photo, a 35 mil film shot with a 100 year old camera. After you've replaced each element, you can submit your prompt and that formula has given you a guide to getting some images similar to what you see below, which is four very old fashioned looking images of frogs. But what if we want to change it a little bit? I reused that frog prompt by clicking use next to the images and I changed the vintage portrait to a selfie. I changed studio lighting to golden hour. I removed 35 mil film and replace it with Instagram post. And instead of a hundred year old camera, I put an iPhone. And then instead of having no camera on there, I have no phone. And the no is to remove that object from the image. So I've been able to change the nature of the image into more of a modern selfie type image by changing those various elements of the prompt formula. And by switching out those various elements to the prompts you see on screen, you get some very different types of photos. You can change out the subject and change out the photo type, the camera, the, the format of the shot, and each one just gives you a little bit more control over how that final image looks. As you can see for these images, you get some pretty good results. So you can use your imagination to come up with just about anything for these placeholders. I think Polaroid worked out pretty well with this particular image. But if you're looking for something historical, try this one. Character in a historical setting, the style of the image and the action that they are performing. So you see here we have a clan in World War I newspaper photo running through the battlefield. So you see how easy it is to switch out some of those elements and get a pretty interesting shot. Well, this one with the Terminator in medieval France, walking calmly into a castle, professional photo, we get that professional photo quality. So just keep switching out those elements and you'll see that you can quite easily get very sort of historical looking photos, with historical looking elements in the background and changing the style, such as an oil painting, it can have a really nice effect and get you something that really looks very similar to something from history. Then the next one is a very short but transformative formula. It's subject inspired by anything. And it does a really good job of taking your subject and adding that element to it. So I've got a frog inspired by VHS glitch effects. And you can see how it's kind of got that glitch effect added to it, even in the skin under the belly or in frog inspired by an upright human body. So it's standing upright or even a frog inspired by superheroes to add a cape, which I think looks pretty cool, but it also doesn't have to be an object. You can also apply an artist. So I have a frog inspired by HR Giga. So you can see how we've got that HR Giga style. So any art style or artist also helps or even ancient Roman buildings. So we've got like this ancient Rome building type effect added to that frog. There's a lot more you can do with this and I highly recommend experimenting with it for a bit of fun. But if you're looking for some more prompt formulas, including the list of these ones in the video today, I have a list of 25 prompt formulas in a digital download you can get. Link is in the description below if you wanna check that out. Then we have subject seen in the style of artist or style. So this one's pretty common, but it's a very powerful way to apply a style to an image. So we start with a dancing girl. We can add an artist such as Pablo Picasso or even HR Giga to get a different effect on that. Otherwise we can add a genre of art such as surrealism. If we want to sort of go more for a broader sort of genre of art, we can describe it more sort of succinctly, something like ink dripping drawing. As you might've seen me mention this before, or try something unique like in the style of a melted cheese statue. Your imagination is pretty much the limit here. An artist, a style, or even just your imagination can get a pretty good result. We switch to a frog riding a bike in Pablo Picasso, we get this really cool style of image. We can also try the melted cheese statue to get something interesting, or even the ink dripping drawing again. And you can see how that style transforms the image overall. And even the HR Giga style creates a very unique style of image when applied to it. But as another quick example, we'll switch to a moon in cosmic space filled with clouds. Again, we get the ink dripping drawing with a nice dripping effect. The melted cheese statue does a pretty good job of creating something very unique. Then we get that dark high contrast, almost alien look with HR Giga. A little less of the elements, but still an overall feel of that style. 
Character to character texture transfer is a nice fun style you can use to kind of like take one character and combine it with another. Starting with Captain America to the Incredible Hulk texture transfer, we get this cool hulked out Captain America. Take the same Captain America and apply it to something like Homer Simpson and get this very odd Homer Simpson-like-esque version of him. Or Mickey Mouse if you're looking for something a little bit creepier with this formula. But also, the Terminator makes for a very interesting skull-like Terminator version of Captain America. But sticking with the theme of the Terminator, we got Mickey Mouse and we get something incredibly creepy. But here's something I find interesting. I've got the Terminator to the Incredible Hulk and we've basically got the Terminator in a hulked out version of him. But if we switch the characters around, we get the Incredible Hulk dressed as the Terminator. So the order does make a difference when using this particular formula. And again, we have Pikachu as the Incredible Hulk hulking out and Wolverine to the Incredible Hulk. So you can see how you can have a lot of fun creating some images with this particular formula. It's something that a lot of people do this kind of thing on social media very effectively. But this one is a nice clean vector logo formula, which minimalist vector logo design of subject by artist or graphic designer. So in this case, we have Pikachu uh, by Carolyn Davidson, who's a very famous, famous designer, or even Paul Rand, another famous designer to get some pretty interesting results. Switch over to Mickey Mouse by Paul Rand. We get again, another minimal vector style emblem, but you can also just describe a world-class graphic designer instead of the actual artist itself. You can describe the artist or even a low budget graphic designer for this design of a dog. But adding a little bit more info to the subject, like a vector logo design of white outlines for a coding company by HR Giga, you get a really cool result like this one. Switch it to Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball, we get something a little bit different again, or even Picasso to get this cool cube-like line sort of logo. So you can see how it's easy to get some cool logo designs using this formula. Then we have a subject or object made out of a type of material in order to basically create something made out of a particular sort of substance. So we have the head of a samurai made out of rock. We get this nice statue, rock-like statue, or even made out of marble for a nice marble effect. Or you can get creative and say made out of Lego bricks or something a little bit different like red jelly. And this is a pretty cool effect. And of course, I have to mention our made out of melted cheese to get another interesting example or solid iron. So you see just how easily this formula works to create some interesting objects and statues. But tapping into emotion also has a very powerful effect. So we have a motion image of subject. We have a happy image of a samurai warrior looking pretty happy. We switch it up to sad and we've got a nice close up of a sad looking samurai warrior. So you can see how this works kind of already. An anxiety image has an effect on that too. And of course, furious. So you can see here you can actually use this to help sort of put emotion into your characters, but it doesn't just stop there. It also works with animals. So we have a happy image of a dog, a sad image of a dog, and even anxiety. And the way it transforms the image and the colors really makes a difference. Switch it up to furious and the whole image changes, not just the expression of the dog. And to demonstrate how much difference you get, I also have an empty city street. So happy, we get something that looks colorful, a little bit vibrant, and just kind of a happy color profile, but sad, dulls those colors down. Get really dark, high contrast, sort of misty clouds. Switch it up to anxiety. There's a little bit more of a blue tint to it. You can't tell this is anxiety, but it has definitely had an impact. And when we make it a furious image, we got a very damaged street. Things are falling to bits and we got a very muted, almost dystopian color. So you can see how you can actually use that to change the mood of your images, not just your characters. And this one is also a bit of fun, subject in movie scene, movie screen cap. The movie screen cap makes it look like it's actually a scene from the movie. So we have a small puppy in the movie Tron and you can see how he's kind of got that Tron outfit on. Go further back in time to the 1950s Japanese film Seven Samurai and it really nails the aesthetic of that shot. And we've got a Star Wars movie on the Death Star. Sure, the Death Star's in the background, but the aesthetic definitely fits. And it worked very well also with Andy's room in Toy Story. You've got a very, very good aesthetic and actually see Andy's room in the background. I also tried On the Nostromo for the movie Alien by Ridley Scott to really nail that down. And we didn't get the alien, but the aesthetic was definitely on point. I changed out the robot frog instead of a puppy for the Japanese film Seven Samurai and we get over it the aesthetic, very consistent. Same again with the Star Wars movie on the Death Star. This looks a little bit closer to actually being on the Death Star and also in Andy's room in the movie Toy Story. He actually converts it into a toy and definitely nails that appearance. And again, in the Nostromo, in the movie Alien, we get an almost alien-like robot frog. The aesthetic again being nailed, especially for the Nostromo. 
However, we also have subject and abstract style, color scheme and light lighting in order to get a nice abstract style of image that's a little bit different. So I have here a clown's face in digital glitch style. Neon colors, glowing lights, creates a very unique digital style of image. I switch it up to surreal abstract collage, mentioning purple and green, and it gets purple and green. The dark lighting adds something to it as well. And then changing up to ASCII characters, radioactive saturated colors, high contrast, creates this really cool image. But then when I change it to geometric abstraction with radioactive saturated colors again, we get this cool sort of like painted face look, switch the colors to sepia. We can still see that same effect, but with sepia color added to it. So this is a great formula just for really getting a nice abstract style, nailing down the colors and the look of the image as well. So you have a little bit of control and you're not just rolling the dice to get whatever image comes out. But what did you think of the prompt formulas shared today? Do you have any you use that you would like to share in the comments below? Would you like to find out more? Again, check out that download below 25 AI art prompt styles. It is a free PDF download. It includes the list of today's styles if you, or today's prompt formulas if you want to get a hold of that. Otherwise, that is the video for today, guys, and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider giving the video a like. Otherwise, thanks for watching the video. I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.